Hey guys and welcome to episode 4 of the FPL Pop-In Podcast, brought to you by your friends at the FPL Journal. I'm your host, Mictavius, and I'm joined, as always, by my more glamorous host, Imfria. Hey, Meg. Well, it's been a red-hot weekend yeah. in the Premier League. See so what you shall... did there. See what you did. So shall we just cut straight in to the big talking points of the weekend? Sounds like a plan. Only one place to start, and that's the Etihad. Well, our predictions didn't go too well with that. No. Um, we predicted a red win. Yeah. Both of us, uh, <laughs> different scores. You went for four three, and I went for three two, both for Liverpool. And um, City didn't listen to that. Uh, no, <laughs> they decided <laughs> they, to write their own. Script. Yeah, they kind of took my three two and just decided to keep all the goals for themselves and go for a five nil win. Yeah, yeah. Well, at least we had the five goals, I suppose. Yeah, right amount, just not who got them. Yeah, exactly. But that all sort of hinged on one crazy moment. That has left one player scarred mm. for a high foot. The and, Mane. And that's the Mane. The Mane. Karate yeah. Kid Mane. Big question. <laughs> You're going to ask, aren't you? Yeah. Mm. How important do you think Mane is to the Liverpool <laughs> defence? <laughs> well, clearly quite important. It's usually important. They're only 1-0 down at the time. He goes off and apparently they can just concede four more goals. Exactly. It's because when he's playing, he has the ball so often that his defence doesn't have to worry quite so much. Mingle didn't even know what hit him. Exactly. He's like, where's Mane? Why is he not playing with the ball? And and then he just has shot after shot after shot against him. Yeah, it was it was quite something to see, really, wasn't it? Well, yeah, for Edison especially. Yeah. Not that he saw anything. Probably for a few minutes afterwards as well. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. But he's fine because he's doing a check impression now in training. Yeah. He's got a nice helmet on. Oh, well, you've got to love a good hat. Yeah, you've got to feel sorry for Bra- <laughs> You've got to feel sorry for Bravo, really. You thought, oh, I'm going to get some game time now. Yeah. And, then, and then Edison's back in training. <laughs> He's like, oh, back to the bench with me. <laughs> right. But obviously it was the red card. I know the rules of the game. Although his eyes were on the ball, he was technically out of control. So, quote unquote, endangering opponents. But... 24 hours later, Richie does the same thing. Gets the yellow. Gets the yellow because Mawson was a couple of inches away from his foot rather than implanted into his studs. Mm. (laughs) Where's the consistency with the referees there? It's such a tough one. I wouldn't want to be a referee, put it that way. I just think for every every side that says it's a red, there's a good opposing argument for why it should be a yellow so it's um a tough one that and i'm not really sure on which side of the fence I'm no I, I, I don't i'm not sure i want to <laughs> nail my flag to any masts no, no because either side can can burn that flag down <laughs> it seems especially on on twitter there was some hot debate yes on on whether that was a red or not mm-hmm And the other main talking point of the weekend obviously came on Monday morning. And that's the first managerial sacking of the season. It's out of the way. It's done. The merry-go-round has begun. And it was us. We did it. Yes. Well, you know what? We did say we were going to try and tone down talking about our teams in the podcast. But, But, you know, when something like this happens... We have to kind of mention it. I you know, I, I, I don't want to talk about Crystal Palace every week. Yeah. But every week they give us a reason because <laughs> it's so bad. It is. Four games. Four games. And he's gone. Gone. Yeah, and but four games and no goals. <laughs> no goals. That's, that's, you know, I understand that. You know, he wanted to come in, he wanted to change the way the team played, he wanted this more free-flowing football, which the chairman was all for, you know, the evolution of the club. So he tried that. It was going to take a while to settle in, because trying to go to free-flowing football from Sam Allardyce, Mm -hmm. that's not a very quick thing. No. So... And you've got quite... You had some quite important players injured as well. I'd like to point out, you know, your Zahas and PVAs and things like that. Sacco hasn't come back yet. So, tough gig, maybe. Tough gig, I'm afraid. It is, but... (laughs) It's really bad. We should have got this in time for the last podcast, but just after we released it, I had um, a letter from my granddad which contained a limerick Oh, yes. A limerick that, for some reason, he's never written limericks 
that I'm aware of Your in my life. Your granddad is the dude. <laughs> he is, well, you haven't heard it yet. But <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll just quickly read it out. There was once a manager called De Boer whose team kept failing to score. If he gets the sack, they could probably go back. They could try Sam Allardyce once more. Boom. He's like the Oracle or something. Yes. He knew. Yes, he and knew. this was this was last week. I mean, I we could have scored this week, and we didn't. And they knew. tried. They tried Sam Allardyce, and apparently he said no just before going on <laughs> on Monday Night Football. I don't go back to yeah, our girlfriends. You know, sorry, I don't, I don't like exes. <laughs> We've so got... hang on now, do we think your granddad had anything to do with it? That is the question. Well, he may be drinking buddies with Roy Hodgson, I'm not sure. Yeah, maybe that's what it I'm is. Trying to get him a gig. <laughs> yeah. Oh, fair play. I love that. I reckon I reckon that should uh, that should make it onto the social media platform. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'll, t- I'll tweet out and get some backlash from some Palace fans. <laughs> be fine. Probably like, who's already gone, mate? <laughs> it's fine, it's fine. Just if anyone's out there who writes limericks, why not write a limerick about how this season's going? Maybe for your team, your FBL oh, team, or idea. just football in general. You know, hit us with some limericks. Hit them in. We'll chat them up on the popping pod. Well, yeah, we'll have lim- limerick corner, limerick <laughs> lay by, <laughs> <laughs> limerick lay by. Yeah, we can stop off on this this journey we're going into the lay by, read some limericks, and then we're off again. Off again, yeah. And from some prize and limericks. To our surprise fixtures from last week. Uh huh. How did your prediction go for your surprise pick? So I predicted that the West Ham Huddersfield game would be a two all, so a draw. Yeah, you went for a Desmond two two. A Desmond two two. As so, I got the two right <laughs> on yeah, one, one side one team at least. Helped you out, yeah. Yeah, yeah, but uh, Huddersfield forgot to score their two <laughs> goals for me. They were like, "Who gets the clean sheet again?" Yeah. Does it- Oh, oh, yes. Then, oh, so yeah, they yeah. So I kind of predicted that Huddersfield would lose their clean sheet. Yeah. So I got that bit yeah, right. You did, yeah, you'd get a quarter of a point. Yeah, but that is about it, I'm afraid. What about yourself? Um, wasn't good. No. Wasn't good. No, predictions aren't being my strong thing at the moment. I don't I've... think they've helped either of us out, really. No, no. And um, there'll be more predictions later on, which will go terribly wrong. Um, <laughs> I... Went for the Arsenal Bournemouth game, mm-hmm. which was actually a bit surprising, but not for what I thought, because I thought Bournemouth would get their first win over Arsenal with a three-two win, mm-hmm. and she sits smugly because Arsenal won three-nil, yes, surprisingly did. keeping a clean sheet <laughs> and scoring three goals. Yeah. But I have to point out that Bournemouth, although Palace haven't scored a goal yet in the four games, Bournemouth only scored one. And they've lost all their games. And they've only scored one goal. So is that one goal keeping Eddie Howe in a job? Yeah. Just saying. Just yeah. putting it out there. Yeah. Wow. You certainly put that one out there, didn't you? Yeah, I did. <laughs> <laughs> that was a little bit disgruntled. Poor Eddie that. Howe. <laughs> We've touched on last week's heavyweight fixture, which was the Man City-Liverpool one, which obviously our predictions were nowhere near, pretty much. Mm-hmm. Um, going for Liverpool wins and Man City blew them away. But the supporting act one was a bit closer, a bit better. Yeah. We did actually predict the right winner for that. We did, yeah. The Everton-Spurs game, obviously Spurs won 3-0. Yeah. I predicted a 2-1 Spurs win, so I got the three goals. Uh Uh-huh. Just not in the right order. That's true, that's true. But Mystic Mig is no more, and Mystic Nim (laughs) not only predicted the right score Tottenham-wise, but who scored them? Yeah. So I said 3-2 to Tottenham. Yeah. And I actually said, hopefully, a Harry Kane hat-trick. But I wouldn't mind two goals to Harry Kane and one goal to Ericsson. I really wouldn't mind that. And that's what happened. And they were obviously listening. We got some listeners in the Tottenham locker room. Yeah. Because they were like, oh, we need to get two for Kane and one for Ericsson to make Nim happy. Exactly. I just wish I'd had my... Brave boy pants on and captained Kane. <laughs> oh, well, can't have everything. No, no, you know. true, true. But the last bit of last week's review is always the funniest moment of the week. Mm-hmm. Now, I'm, I'm going to go first with this this week. And mine was from new FPL signing Renato Sanchez when he um, took his leg and sort of kicked 
another player between his. Mm. Yeah, it was a bit of a comedy moment when the player jumps up for a header, comes down and finds himself straddled across Sanchez's leg. Um, It needed sound effects, to be fair. Mm -hmm. It's sort of a bit Laurel and Hardy. Mm -hmm. So if it just had a bit of a bong or a bit of a... Then, you know, it could have been a lot more funny. (laughs) Especially for the other player who then arrived around the floor, obviously clutching at his footballs. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> he's king gang gooly goolies <laughs> um my funniest moment probably came monday during the huddersfield west ham game i just love it sometimes when the camera pans you know the fans and yeah always, always looking for yeah something in the crowd and it was absolutely chucking it down and it looked awful there and there was just this one huddersfield fan in amongst all the other Huddersfield fans, and he had his back to what was going on <laughs> in the actual match. Well, and match. he was trying his best, bless him, to get everybody going. He was like, you know, jumping up in his arms in the air, and he was doing everything he could. And he was just met with a sea of very unhappy Huddersfield <laughs> faces just looking at him like, nah. <laughs> nah, we can't. I'm not standing up, mate. I'm too wet. Yeah, sorry, mate. You're on your own on this one. <laughs> and I just found that a little bit amusing. <laughs> Poor fella. As he turned round, slumped down. So no one wants to play. Nobody wants to sing along with me. <laughs> Maybe next time. Maybe in the sunshine, you can give it a go. Yeah. This week, we took part in the Hype Train Game Week 4 forecast. Um, where we predicted the results for the games and we put some suggestions about attacking and defensive properties for each team and we made a squad with no budget to go up against the hype train guys. Uh And it was a bit of a mixed bag. Yeah. Looking back on their previous weeks, they done pretty good. But with our score predictions, we came joint third. Oh, well, that's not too bad. Out of four. So you oh. could say joint last, but I prefer joint third. <laughs> yeah, we'll go with joint third, that's something. We only got two points because ah. um, we were bad. Well, as we know, for anyone listening to this show should know that predictions aren't our strong point. So, no. you know, we were never going to do well at that bit. <laughs> but to be fair, the person in first only got four points. Oh. So we're only a couple of points off. If we got predicted the right score somewhere else, we would have been top. Yeah. So, you know, it's not too bad. We were worst of a bad bunch in that. But we did a lot better in the actual squad we done because we came second in that with 40 points. First only had 48, I believe. So if we had made a better captain choice, because somebody, not naming any names, possibly me, went for a captain choice that didn't quite work out um, because we captained... Mane. Yeah, so when we say we, again, I just want to stress that that was most definitely you. Because the reason is, I'm all for a gut feeling and you just happen to be quite passionate about the fact that you felt that Mane would do really well this week. And so, you know what? Who am I to stand in your way? You know, and I, I'm there with you. I'm there with you, but it was kind of your choice. <laughs> to be fair, I, I, I thought Mane would knock it out of the park, and he did. He Well, he knocked Edison's teeth out of his mouth. But yeah, so if we had captained one of our other choices, i.e. Kane or vice-captain Lukaku, then we probably would have topped that and would have had a bit of credibility. So what you're telling me is, because of you, we lost. And well, now we look that's like it's a idiot. bit strong. <laughs> I wouldn't say we lost. We were hampered in the points that we could have accumulated. Oh, okay. Nicely put. Yeah. Phew. Talking about points we could have accumulated, shall we get on to our FPL points review? Yeah. Mirror images this week. Uh huh. Because we both got fifty-four points. Boom! Fifty-four. There's no, there's no bragging. This, this, well, there's no bragging in general, no. but there's no bragging rights this week because we've both got the same points. No. Yeah, but, however, I just want to state that I actually got above the average this game week. Which That's from... weird because I didn't. <laughs> no, I did, I did. 
I was like, what? What have I missed? <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> I've been giving out false information. Uh, but no, I'm actually quite surprised because I haven't actually been doing very well. As you know, never have a particularly great start and was just happy really to get more points than the average this game week. So, and to actually see some green arrows was quite Yeah, nice. it, was, it was nice. There have been more green arrows recently. I think, you know, we've been hmm. clawing our way back up that overall table now. Yeah, yeah. That 54 knocks me up to 204 overall. 99,000 just outside the 1 million mark. Ooh, yeah, so you're doing that. Closing well. in on that top mill. Yeah, definitely. And that 54 brings me up to 179 overall and too many numbers to mention. <laughs> <laughs> Although it could have been a lot better for me. Well, not a lot better, but it could have been better because of my transfer dealings this week, which hampered me greatly. Um which I'll get onto in a second because those points was the difference between me being 1.1 million and top 600,000. So that's, that was the difference of the points. But we'll get onto that with our player review. And can I start? Because I did actually predict something right. Woo! Last week, my fire player, because I said he was going to cut through the Liverpool defence, and he did. And that was Jesus, and he is my star man this week. Oh, awesome. 12 big points for Jesus. Jesus. Yeah, awesome. No, he looked brilliant. He really did. And I'm quite jealous that I don't have him in my team. Massive fan, as you know, of both Aguero and Jesus. So when I see them doing very well, it's uh, it's tough. Tough to watch that. So Jesus did well for you this game week, but who are you predicting to be your star man for next game week? Okay, I think my star man for next week... And thus, my fire player for this week, because mm-hmm. he's going to do really well, is <gasps> Jesus again. Because <laughs> okay, he's, he's up against Watford. Mm-hmm. We've had a good start to the season, to be fair to them. They've looked quite good, looked quite dangerous. But I think Jesus can cut through them again and maybe not score two goals. But I think, I think he could grab one, at least. Cool. So who is your star player for this week? And... Your fire player looking forward to next week. Well, I think my star man is most definitely Kane. I mean, he got two goals. September is here. September's here. So Kane, ha- Kane yeah. has awoken. Kane has awoken and he's got some catching up to do. So he's most definitely my star man. But as for my fire player, I'm thinking maybe Lukaku. He's up against his former club, Everton. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Could bring the fire. He could do a cante he and could. score against his old club. He could indeed. He so. could aspire to be a goal scorer like Cante. <laughs> <laughs> and talking of Duff Puffs, <laughs> <laughs> who was yours? <laughs> uh, my Duff Puff this week was me. Oh. Yes. Not a player. I can't hinge this as on any of the players, except maybe Bertrand. He don't. He got quite bad against mm-hmm, Watford, mm-hmm. but let you off why because of the transfers i made i left it until quite late the night before and i sold de bruyne and richie for fur and mané ouch yeah so i sold a player who got 9 points and a player who got 5 points for someone i left on the bench who got 1 point and someone who got minus 2 um yeah. So I kind of done myself out of about 10 points. and That's pretty much the definition of a duff puff right there. Yeah. So I sort of duffed myself up there. You really did. Especially since Omane went out in the first game on Saturday. So it kind of set the scene for the whole weekend. Mm. Well, which great. you know, seeing as you're kind of in a bit of self-loathing over there and you were happy to skip over Bertrand being your duff puff, I, however... I'm not. <laughs> oh, oh. oh, come back, Ryan. You're in trouble. Yeah. Um, I'm afraid he makes it into my Duff Puff Club. Duff Puff Club. My Duff oh, Puff Club. Just get a t-shirt. Yeah. I mean, he really should have done better against Watford, I think. Probably, yeah. Um, But then Watford have been pretty good this season, so it's a tough one to call. However, I was expecting Southampton just to generally do better. Yeah. A clean so, sheet would have been enough. Well, you know, even if you didn't get a clean sheet, some attacking points might have been nice. 
<laughs> but yeah, so Bertrand is my Daft Puff. And what about your lightning pick? My lightning pick came in the Monday Night Football. I didn't think I'd have one because I didn't really have anyone other than my big players do anything. But <laughs> I don't know how he done it. But Lerva walked away from a 2-0 defeat with a clean sheet. Lover. I love her it. I love uh, him. <laughs> I love her it. Because he, he got subbed off on like the 62nd minute or something like that Ugh. with a clean sheet. And then West Ham proceeded to score a couple of goals, which is awesome. Yeah. But obviously not going to get that stroke of luck every week. No. You know, he's true. not he's not going to get taken off. That's true. On the hour mark with a clean sheet every time. So he will be my lightning pick for this week. Thank you, Lerva. Yeah. Um, I actually don't have a lightning pick. There's nobody really that I felt that might strike it lucky or strike it hot. So it's uh, pretty much clear skies for me on that one. Clear skies and a sunny afternoon. Yeah. In Nymphria's world. But it's not sunny in that dark, dingy bin of sin. No, not at all. Who resides in that bin for you? Well, um, there's, there's a few. <laughs> um, Oof. I was kind of hoping that minus... That skips back again, isn't it? Yeah, that minus 12 would uh, would save me thinking about this bin of sin for a while. <sighs> but unfortunately, a few of those players I've brought in haven't been as great as I would have hoped. And uh, Chitterito is definitely one of those players. Yeah, he's definitely broken the last couple of games. So he's possibly one of those ones that I'm thinking about transferring out. Maybe thinking about transferring Mooman out um, for somebody slightly cheaper, like a kind of decore, somebody that sort of area, mm-hmm. um, to free up a bit of cash. Can't really go very far with Chitorito because of the price that he is, so... Yeah, it's quite, quite an awkward price. Yeah, he mm-hmm. really is, so it's kind of either going down... To somebody much cheaper, like um, Abraham or uh, yeah, sort of Abraham Boney, 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 yeah, yeah Wood, sort of thing. Swansea or, Burnley, sort of thing. Then I gotta maybe consider, you know, downgrading somewhere else. I do believe Pogba got himself into a bit of a mischief in the Champions League. Yeah, yeah, we're recording this just after the Tuesday night games. So, and Pogba got taken off in like the 19th, 20th minute, mm-hmm, something like that. Mm-hmm. Possible hamstring. Yeah. So he could be gone for a few weeks. Yeah, I do have two full transfers in the bank, so I'm going to have to think over this one. It's that thing, do I, you know, maybe try to think about getting Salah back in for, <laughs> yeah, for yeah. Pogba? If not, do I maybe go for somebody cheaper and then use that money to upgrade Chitorito? So it's, it's a tough one. I'm not entirely sure what I'm going to do yet, but Chitterito is very close. He's kind of, my foot is on the pedal, <laughs> and I kind of want to hold on to him a bit longer. I don't feel like I've given him long enough yeah, he, yet. Yeah, he does, he does have a pretty good run of games. Mm. I mean, he did hit the crossbar. He did. So it could have been a completely different story if they would actually gone under the bar. That's true. So, in all honesty, I'm feeling a bit lost, but I'm feeling like in this metaphorical bin that we have at the moment i'm putting the little pea in there <laughs> it's turned into a little a little pea food bin yeah for now and yourself um well there's one big um red elephant in the room um <laughs> which is mané obviously uh brought him in this week and now he's suspended for three games only two of which are the premier league games because one of them will be the league cup game against leicester uh-huh. so it's only two games so yeah but so many people are going to jump off of that shit that's the thing it's like do you go with the prices and get rid of him and get someone in because at his price obviously it could be any midfielder besides sanchez and hazard so could go like for like with like you said salah or maybe um you know coutinho if he now plays. Mm, Not sure. Good point, good point. Or even Chamberlain. <coughs> um, <laughs> or shift over to Man United. Obviously not Pogba now, but um, Mkhitaryan. But I do have Mata, mm. so I do kind of have that covered. So it could probably be 
uh, a Liverpool or maybe a Man City because I don't have De Bruyne anymore. Mm-hmm. So I could go back to De Bruyne or David Silva, mm-hmm. possibly. Or just leave him there for a couple of weeks and maybe cover and just welcome him back with open arms and a slap on the wrist. Ooh. Not too sure. Mm-hmm. But he'll probably go. There's a bit of indecision this game week for the better us, yeah. isn't there? Yeah. It's at that stage where it's, it's sort of a bit muddled because it's like some people have wild carded, some mm-hmm. people haven't, some people have like set team in their mind and I thought I had that and then Mane gets a red card and it's all gone flying up in my head. Mm. Just not sure. Yeah, me either. Okay, we'll just have a, a brief look at the um, FBL Journal League and see how it's doing. And we've got a new leader. Woo! And thankfully, no offence to any previous leader, but he's got a name I can pronounce. Yes! Well done. Luke Jennings. Oh, well done, Luke. With his team, Nice to Meet You. Oh, nice. Like meet that. you. Mm. I like it. It's I like clever. it. Very clever. Destroyed it this week. 93 points this Whoa. week. 93. No way. Takes him up to 286. He, well, he had some crazy players. He had Jesus as captain. He had nice. Kiko Femenia. I didn't even know that man existed until this week. No, neither did I, actually. That's the new one. Um, he got 11 own. points. Aspilicueta, Morata, mm-hmm. Pogba. He had Mane on minus two. Obviously meant nothing. But he used his bench boost. Ooh. He got some yeah. extra things on it. And on his bench, he had people like Gross, 18 big points. Elliot on eight. Tarkovsky with six. He had a great week. He used that bench boost to its full potential for sure. He done well with that choice. Yeah. Well done, Luke. Well done, Luke. It's, it's nice to meet you. <laughs> um, we've both gone up in the league. Oh. Well, Green Arrows. Good times. Loving it. I've moved up to 63rd. Mm-hmm. And you've moved up to legs 111. Woo! That's what I'm saying, bingo. Out of 164. Lovely legs. So, lo- lovely legs 11. Lovely legs 11. I like and 100. That. 111. Well, it's a green arrow. I'll it's a green it. arrow, you know. Yeah, I'm coming for that top 100. Yeah, yeah watch <laughs> out, Luke. <laughs> be there all right, in, all right. We'll be, we'll be there in, in about 12 weeks. <laughs> um, But looking forward to not 12 weeks, but just to next week and our games of the week, which is going to be our heavyweight game. The Chelsea-Arsenal match. Chelsea-Arsenal, Super Sunday game. <sighs> Big London derby. Uh huh. Mm. How are you feeling about that? I am nervous. Um, I don't know if Arsenal can be measured by the fact that they beat Bournemouth. You know, Bournemouth haven't been the best. <laughs> and no, no, yeah. <laughs> when when you see a Liverpool side put four past your team, and then have five put past them. <laughs> yes, that's true. Um, it. it it's a little bit worrying with, uh, you know, especially when you see how Chelsea did in the Champions League as well. Yeah, they so. beat a carrier bag, something like that. <laughs> something like that. Tesco's carrier bag. By lots of goals, though. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, yeah, I'm. we're getting back to those predictions again that we're so good those at. crazy predictions. I'm going to say, oh, feel dirty, 2-1 to Chelsea. Ooh. But I think we might we might sneak a goal. We might sneak even sneak two goals. Do you think Wenger will pull the trigger on Lacazette and Sanchez playing I together? Hope so I'm desperate to see them play together. <laughs> I know that sounds really stupid, but I just think that partnership could be brilliant, and it could be exactly what Sanchez needs to get his head back in the game again. He needs to start matches, but so does Lacazette and it would just be really nice to see them starting alongside each other. If he's going to do it, I would like to think at least that it'll be in that match. I mean, there's there's hardly a bigger match to do it in. So if it doesn't happen there, then we're possibly most likely not going to see yeah, that it's, happen. Yeah, it's, it's probably not going to happen. Although, who does he drop? Because... Welbeck with these two goals. Mm-hmm. Ozil, probably drop Ozil. Yeah, I would drop Ozil. Yeah, probably drop, yes. Yeah, yeah, drop Ozil. Yeah. Um, well, I'm oof, I'm going to feel even dirtier now after you saying that. Um, I'm going for a 2-0 Chelsea win. Because I'm seeing a traditional Chelsea game here where they grab a goal, soak up all the pressure mm. and then just break and score another one, breaking Arsenal hearts and taking a 2-0 win. Parking the bus and then dropping some people off at the goal. 
pit stop. <laughs> yeah, some someone will break away. It'll probably be a Willian or a Pedro or something. Probably. And score. <laughs> and our supporting act is the other big game on Super Sunday: Man United versus Everton. The returns of both Lukaku and Rooney to their former club. How you see? Well, I say that, but will Rooney play? I'm not sure. You know, no. will he be legally? Will he be able to get there? I don't Will know. Will he carpool with someone? I'm not sure. You might get a taxi. Maybe. Yeah, probably best. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Yeah. Um, maybe so. maybe Big Ron can give him a lift. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> may, yeah. May, maybe he should. Maybe he should. Stop. Don't, don't drink and drive. Um, What's your prediction? My prediction is I'm actually going to go for what you just said a minute ago. I'm going to go for a 2-1 win to the red side. Mm-hmm. Manchester United. I think they're going to get back on track after the two all draw with Stoke. Um, Ron will score and he won't celebrate like they always do. <laughs> um, how are you seeing the return of Lukaku and Rooney? I think this might be a little bit closer. I was tempted to go the same as you, if I'm honest, and call it a 2 1. I actually think it could end up a draw and might end up being a little bit tighter than you expect it to be. It's an, it's always a tasty one, um, Man United and Everton, and I could see Everton getting a little something there. I don't know why, but I just feel a little bit like it could be a draw. Ooh, two. A two all, yeah. Another Desmond Tutu. Another Desmond Tutu. Loving the tutus. We haven't had very many draws yet this season, so... No, oh. no. Bit, <laughs> not not high-scoring sc- high draws, draws, anyway. <laughs> I need some new draws, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm, not, I'm not going there. Um, uh, my surprise fixture this week, may surprise people with just the sheer fact that I'm picking it, is Crystal Palace versus Southampton. Yes, I'm talking about Crystal Palace again. Um, obviously, we've got a new manager, Roy, um, another failed England manager <laughs> coming to save <laughs> Palace. Um, but the boys have to reply. They have to come out swinging. Southampton are also in poor form. They're not great up front. I'm hoping beyond hope that we can grab a 1-0 win. I'd be ecstatic with a 1-0 win. I think we can get it. Mm -hmm. We're at home. We've beaten Southampton in the past. So Mm -hmm. I think the big surprise will be that Palace will score, Palace will win, and Roy Hodgson will be lauded and paraded through the streets of South Norwood. Well, as much as I would really love to see that, because it sounds glorious. It does. Confetti and everything. Um, I I will be playing Bertrand this game week. Oh, so will I. And so <laughs> I kind of don't need that to happen, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I kind of need them to continue on their really bad form just for this game week. And then after that, they can, you know, go on their confetti. After that, we've got like Chelsea know. and the two Manchester clubs. Well, exactly. Carry on. You know, do what you need to do against them. But maybe just, you know... Hold off on the old uh, Southampton there if you can. But um, my surprise fixture this game week, I think, will be Liverpool Burnley. Oh. Yeah, I think that could be a surprising one because obviously, as you alluded to earlier on in the in the podcast, without Mane, Liverpool, you know, don't have that one person kind of taking hold of the ball and creating the play quite as much, unless, of course, Coutinho comes back in. But if they don't have that kind of linchpin, we all know that Liverpool's defence is about as good as Arsenal's defence has been in the <laughs> well, past. Well, yeah, yeah. Um, so, Prove that. So I think Burnley are looking, you know, a little bit, their wood's good. Yeah, wood's good. Wood's good. <laughs> and they've got, got wood. folks and, you know, they, they they are definitely capable of scoring some goals. Oh, yeah. And so I'm kind of hoping it should be an interesting ma- match to to watch that one. So that's my surprise fixture. Good, good, good. And what's not surprising is the fact that we're going to have to end. We have to oh. go. We have to let these good people go back to their normal lives mm-hmm. and stop listening to us rambling on yeah so we'll just drop the usual links yep. check us on the website fpljournal.com and on the twitter at fpljournalblog I'm at McTavius and I'm at Nymphria TV um, you can check out Nymphria's YouTube channel 
Yeah, on youtube.com forward slash FPL Nymphria. You can find the weekly podcast on Nymphria's channel. Yeah. Um, they'll be going up at some point. And obviously there are other places where you can find Nymphria. She's all over the internet. Where <laughs> else are you? That makes me sound really dodgy. <laughs> but no, if you ever want to help out and contribute to my channel, you can also catch me on patreon.com forward slash Nymphria. And you can find the podcast on iTunes and Stitcher and SoundCloud. Links are on the Twitter page. Um, so go check those out. Go download them. Listen to us wherever you are. Wherever you go. Wherever you go. Wherever you go. Gonna be there. <laughs> <laughs> oh my oh, god, we're did gonna we stop. just we're gonna hearsay? Oh my god. We did. We, did. Wow. we hearsayed and we... God, that... No. No. Go. Move on. Move well, on. Move, move on. Oh, we're going to go. We're going to go. We're, we're rambling and we're singing hearsay. Okay. So just keep popping, people. Keep popping. Hashtag keep popping. Nim, get the door. <laughs>